Okay, let's look at a, uh, another type of short-term business decision that companies often face. And that is at what point in processing should they sell its product? So for example, should they continue to complete a product um, or should they sell it off prior to that? A lot of companies are able to sell their products at different points of completion. For example, some furniture manufacturers sell flat packaged bookshelves like your Ikea's um, with furniture that the consumer must finish assembling. Or should they continue to process it, assemble it, put it all together, stain it, finish it, etc. So a cost benefit analysis is going to help managers choose the most profitable point at which to sell the company's products. And the basic decision rule here is we will process further as long as the differential revenue from such processing exceeds the differential processing cost. So as we look at seller process further decisions, at what point should a company sell its product? Many companies, especially in food processing and natural resource industries, face this decision. Companies in these industries process raw milk, um, and to a point just before it's saleable. For example, a dairy processor pasteurizes raw milk before it's saleable. The company must then decide should it sell the pasteurized milk or should it process it further into other dairy products such as reduced fat milk, butter, sour cream, cheese, etc. So the company needs to consider how much revenue it's going to receive if the company sells its product as is. How much revenue will they receive if they continue to process it further? And what are the additional costs to process the product further? And we will look at a dairy uh, problem example here shortly. First, let's take a look at the cost to manufacture one unfinished table. So we've got direct materials, direct labor, variable manufacturing, and fixed manufacturing overhead. For a total cost to manufacture one unfinished table at $35. So if we can sell that for $50, we've just made $15 per unit. Now we do have some unused capacity and we could finish the table so we could varnish them, stain them. And if that's the case, then we could sell the tables for $60. Now if that does occur, it's going to cost us an extra $2 in direct materials plus an extra $4 in direct labor. So our variable manufacturing overhead costs will also increase by $2.40, which is 60% of our direct labor cost increase. Now our fixed costs are not going to increase at all. So the question is, should we go ahead and process further or should we stop with the unfinished? So let's look at what we would earn per unit if we sell them unfinished. If we process them further, again, that sales price goes up but then the costs for um, direct materials, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead also increase. But the net income per unit now is $16.60 as opposed to $15. So by processing further, we've just made an additional $1.60 per item. Um, now, many products, as mentioned earlier, um, could produce multiple end products from a single product and we call those joint products. Other examples besides dairy you can see from petroleum we can make gasoline, oil, kerosene or from meat packing we could make meat, hides, bones, etc. So what's important here with a multiple product case is that all costs incurred prior to the point at which the products are separately identifiable is called the split off point and those are considered joint costs. Joint costs for the purposes of determining product cost are allocated to individual products on the basis of relative sales value. They are not relevant for any seller process for their decisions because they've already been incurred and they cannot be changed. So we call those joint product costs sunk costs. Let me give you an example here. If we have milk we can take that milk and process it further, either into cream or skim milk, and then we could process it further into cottage cheese or condensed milk. The joint costs 
will be incurred up until this point, the split off point. Because in this example, the raw milk is going to be um, pasteurized regardless and split into cream or skim milk. The question is, do we want to take the skim milk and process it further into condensed milk or sell it as skim milk? And do we want to take the cream and process it further into cottage cheese or do we just leave it as cream? Here's some more information. So we can see here that the joint cost allocated to the cream is 9,000, joint cost allocated to the skim milk is 5,000. If we process the cream into cottage cheese, it costs an extra 10,000. And if we process the skim milk into condensed milk, it costs an extra 8,000. Here's what we expect to receive from each of the individual products. 19,000 from cream, 11 from skim milk, cottage cheese, 27,000 condensed milk, 26,000. So should we sell the cream or process it further into cottage cheese? So we can run a nice little table here. If we sell it as is, we will make $19,000. If we process it further, our sales will go up to $27,000. However, we now incur $10,000 of costs to process the cream into cottage cheese. That reduces our income to $17,000. We would lose $2,000. So if this is the case, we do not want to process into cottage cheese and we will keep the cream as is and sell as cream, not cottage cheese. Let's look at what happens with skim milk. If we sell the skim milk, we make $11,000. If we process it into condensed milk, we would make $26,000 minus $8,000 in additional costs or $18,000. In this case, we definitely would want to process the skim milk into condition, condensed milk because that will net us an extra $7,000 in that income. The decision rule for seller process further is if the additional revenue from processing further exceeds the additional costs of processing further, then we should process further. If the additional revenue from processing further is less than the additional cost of processing further, then we should sell the item and not process it further.